Yeah, I'm not. In. <laughs> it's kind of freaking me out a little bit. <laughs> hey, everybody. How you doing? Welcome. It's Thursday. It's 4 o'clock. And we're live here today. We're going to talk about rotisserie. Now, if you don't have a rotisserie, guys, don't turn the channel or, or flip me up on, on, on Facebook or wherever you're watching on YouTube because you can make this recipe in the air fryer without the rotisserie. But with the rotisserie, I'll kind of give you some reasons why I think it comes a little bit better than normal, especially if your rotisserie is a PowerXL air fryer like this one. This is the PowerXL air fryer grill. The PowerXL air fryer grill not only can grill things like steaks and chops and fish and get grill marks and stuff like that, but it also has a rotisserie. And that rotisserie is long enough to, to take something like a pork loin or a pork tenderloin or a filet loin, you know, it's long. So I love it because you're not confined by maybe the size of a chicken. So you can actually do bigger things. Now, why do we want a rotisserie? Jess, just show this one more time. Okay. Now, as it spins, it's literally using its own juices to baste itself. And when pork bastes itself in pork, I mean, do I have to say anything else? Yum. <laughs> Yum, right? So that's why we like to rotisserie. But you can put this on the rack. This recipe will work great on your air fryer, in your rack, absolutely and air fryer rack. constant basting must make it moist inside. Well, listen, who, who can baste constantly all exactly. day, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it does it by itself, right. I love it. So you can do that. If you have a rotisserie, do this with the rotisserie. If not, you can do it on the rack. Okay, so what are we doing today? Well, first we're gonna make a really delicious, um, it's not really a rub, but it kind of is. And this is gonna start with mustard. So before we put our pork onto the spit, this is what we're going to do. We're going to add some stone ground Dijon mustard, a couple of tablespoons of that. Uh, you know, I like the stone ground because it's got a lot of uh, texture to it because the grain is actually whole. I'm using great Poupon today, but any stone ground mustard will do. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use some honey, mm. um, a couple of tablespoons of mustard, and then we're going to do, I don't know, about an eighth of a cup of honey because we want to just make sure that we have enough to go over our entire pork loin. Now, um, we're going to use a little cayenne pepper. Now, you only need about half a teaspoon, quarter teaspoon. Just depends how, oops, how hot you like it. <laughs> I guess I like it very hot. That's what you get when you don't have a measuring spoon. Now, I'm putting smoky paprika. Now, with this, the smoky paprika, we're going to do a couple of tablespoons. That smoky paprika, I mean, think about it. All the best rubs in the world use paprika, and this one's no different. So then what we do is we're going to mix in the honey, the mustard, and those spices. You know, to this, I'm definitely going to add some pepper, but I'm not going to bore you guys. So we'll give it, you know, just a few turns. Put some salt in here as well. And, you know, the mustard's so well seasoned, you don't really even have to do it, but, you know, I can't help myself. We're so used to salting and peppering everything, but that mustard's got tons of flavor. All right, so that's our rub. And then how do we do it? I'm not gonna get too into it, but here's my beautiful pork loin. Jess, look at that. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody thinks about pork as being fatty. Now, I did leave a little bit of fat on the outside because I'm gonna put it on the rotisserie. I want that fat on the outside because I want it to I want those juices. Crispy. Yeah, I want the juices of the pork fat, mm. you know, oh, basting right. all of the outside of the pork. But look on the inside. Can you see that? Yeah, let me, yeah let me I see pork. it. Great. Okay. No, I see it. There's, it's almost fat free, yeah, you know, and that's why they. It's very lean inside. It's very lean. And that's why they call pork the other white meat. And, you know, that's not just a slogan. I mean, it really is. They, they've kind of bred the. <laughs> they've bred the pork to be less fatty than it was many, many years ago. Mm. Um, so even, even the pork shoulders and stuff like that, everything is very different now. And I'm talking like a long time ago, but, uh, pork is definitely, especially if you get the loin, it's definitely going to be on the lean side, like very lean. Now, once so, you put that on, do you need to let it sit? Yeah. So I'm going to just slather this whole thing. Now I would go all the way around all over the sides. What you want to do is you want to throw this in the fridge, throw it in for a couple of hours if you can. But listen, if you can't, it's okay, it's no, nothing's gonna happen, but I'm not done yet. Because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add some fresh herbs. Now these herbs are beautiful and powerful and very important to this recipe. 
So we have fresh sage, mm. which I can't tell this, this sage that I picked up today was just the most fragrant sage sage that I've smelled in a while. And I got the most beautiful rosemary. So um, that's a good thing. You know, spices and herbs are, are not always uh, readily available where they're perfect, right? Mm. I, today I just nailed it. Like the store just had beautiful, wonderful, incredibly potent herbs. So rosemary and sage, look how pretty that looks. We're just going to pop that into the fridge, you know, an hour, hopefully two hours, but it's okay if you can't. Now, I would put that, take it out of the, the fridge, and then I put it on my rotisserie spit. And you guys have already seen that, but I'll show you one more time. This is what it looks like after it's cooked for about, ah, say about 40 minutes-ish, depending on the size. Now, this was a four-pound in the recipe, I said three or four pounds. You know, sometimes they're thinner, sometimes they're thicker. So you're going to have to use your temperature probe. You want it to be around 165. Um, that's what the uh, government says. So that's what we have to say. <laughs> um, so that's, that's where we are. We're cooking our rotisserie spit. We have our pork loin. It's going. Now what are we going to do? Now we're going to get a pot and melt some butter. So I just put a couple of tablespoons of butter in there and I melted it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, Granny Smith apples. Ooh. Granny Smith apples are perfect because they're sweet and sour all on their own. So the flavor profile is already amazing. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put brown sugar. We're going to coat that in the apples, let it cook for about five minutes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add raisins. We're just going to cook that for another couple of minutes. And this is what it looks like when it's done. Look how pretty. Now this, doesn't that look like fall? Oh, it's yes. raisins, it's apples. Comforting. It's so absolutely delicious. And then we're gonna hit that with our, mm. a little bit more of our fresh herb. So you get sort of like that, the rosemary and the, the sage are gonna give you a nice fall flavors. And then you have the apples and the raisins. So this is what we're gonna top our rotisserie uh, pork with. So it's looking pretty good, right? We got a real mustardy oh, yeah. rub. We have uh, a, a really delicious Granny Smith apple compote that we're gonna put on the top of it. You already saw how pretty the pork looks. Now, Jess, why don't you tell me who's out there? Okay. Cause I'm gonna come over there. I'm gonna grab the pork okay. off of the rotisserie spit. So we don't, you know, Yeah. that's not gonna be super exciting to watch. Okay, So let we me have a lot of people here. We yeah. have Anne Vautour. Hi, Anne. The French way. She might not be French, though. <laughs> she's, she's just saying hi. We have Adam Melvin saying, oh, wow, that looks absolutely delicious. Hey, Adam. Adam has been here before. Yeah, he's I from recognize England. that name. Right? England? I believe so. Um, Terry Pro Prophysic said, yummy. Apple pie with no crust is really what you're doing right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cheryl Bull from Tennessee says hello. Hey, Cheryl. How are you? And Katie B says she has that so she recognizes that saucepan and has one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. I love it. I use these all the time. And uh, I have a couple of them, which of, of course you, you guys can imagine that I do. Uh, David Tiet says, are you using Copper Chef? So <laughs> <laughs> am I using Copper Chef? Of course of you course. are. <laughs> we also have someone named Win Shui and I am trying to say, yes, tell us, Eric, which, which um, air fryer do you think is the best one out of all the power cell air fryers? Oh, who asked me that? Win Shi, I think you would pronounce it. Okay, Win. So here, here's the deal. So we have so many air fryers for so many different kinds of people, right? So if you're maybe uh, one or two or, or maybe a small family, you want, I love the power cell five cord vortex. It's so easy to use. This is the one over here. Jess, this is our, our, our gray, sort of our standard egg shape. And that's great. I'm telling you, it's the easiest one to use, in my opinion. And then if you want to go a little bit bigger, you want to go with the PowerXL Pro. That's more of uh, an air fryer with racks in it. And those racks allow you to do multiple meals at once. If you like to grill, <laughs> you want to use the PowerXL air fryer grill. And if you like to slow cook, you want to use the PowerXL air fryer grill combo. So if you go to PowerXLproducts.com, we literally have an air fryer for everybody's size family, everybody's taste, whatever uh, size 
food you want to cook, we, we have one for you. So that's the hardest question Something to for ask. Everyone. But I'm glad that you did because uh, it got me a chance to explain to you a couple of the different air fryers that we use. Okay, and also Donna Brown asked where she, can she get accessories for the air fryer. So I think that same website. PowerXLProducts.com. They have all the accessories that mm -hmm. PowerXL makes. And, you know, they're, they're most likely to have something in stock if they, if they have it. Jillian Beard is here again from England. Hey, Jillian. How you doing? That's two, two people from across yes, the pond. Adam Melvin and her. And then we have Joanne Francis saying hello. Hey, Joanne. Joanne's a frequent visitor yes. here. Uh, Lawada Green from Vancouver, Washington is here. Hey, Lawada. We have Vicki Harrell from West Virginia. Oh, how are you? How's West Virginia today? What's the weather over there? <laughs> and uh, lots of people are saying they actually love pork, so this is working out great. And um, Donna McKinney had an interesting comment. She said she made the honey roasted salmon recipe that came with her XL six quart oven air fryer. Okay. So you know how you do recipes yeah. for them in the, in the box? Yeah. She said delicious, in fact, so good that I ate it before I even could take a picture. <laughs> she meant to. You know, we like to put recipes um, that ship with, with all the PowerXL products. We like to put nice ones in there. We like to, you know, give you a pamphlet with most of the time we always uh, put some photos because I know people really enjoy photos when they're, when they're making a recipe. Jess, come on in here because I want to okay. show how pretty this pork is. Oh, gosh. Now, look at that. We are... That looks perfect. Now, between that beautiful caramelized outside, because remember, we put honey and mustard on here. So those mm. sugars are caramelized on the outside. And, you know, look oh, how wow. juicy. I can, can smell you see? it. Look at I this. Can smell the honey and mustard. Look at me. this. This is white meat pork. Oh, and look how the it. juices are just pouring right out of that. That yeah. is really, really good. Beautiful. So. Well, that's what happens when you baste something that often. <laughs> 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 a rotating basis, if you will. That's right. When you, when you uh, baste your pork in pork, <laughs> it's going to taste better. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little of our compote. I'm just going to do it right over here. I'm not even going to make a plate today because, you know, it's nice to have a platter like this. Mm. I think it's really pretty. And then... Um, Family style. Yeah. Just over the top. I'm just going to lay some of this over and then we can get a nice little beauty shot for everybody. <laughs> and then, you know, I'm going to finish oh, this that up. that is so beautiful. With some really pretty herbs oh on top. Oh my goodness. I feel like it's a holiday now. <laughs> well, Is this you know, like a holiday today? You know how they say it's five o'clock somewhere? Yeah. I'm sure there's a hollow. There's there's a holiday somewhere. Yeah, you're probably right. Who the heck knows? Uh, there's always a probably holiday. Like, probably like National Raisins and Apples Day or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think there is some kind of apple thing going on right now. I'm not yeah. sure. Well, there you so, go. So you can't have enough rosemary and sage with this because it really holds up to the apples and the raisins and the mustard. It's it's lots of powerful flavors, which is good because you know the pork is. Pork is delicious, but it is kind of neutral, right? Mm -hmm. So especially the pork loin. You know, when you get into some of the other parts of the pork, it's it's got a little bit more flavor. This is a little bit more neutral. So all these extra flavors that we put on really, really work <laughs> well. Mr. Misty Animation says, wow, that roast looks fine. Mr. Misty Animation. Yeah, <laughs> that's Mr. Pretty, Misty Animation. That's pretty cool. Uh, Let's see. Oh, Laura Searcher's here. I haven't seen Laura hey, in a little Laura bit. Hey, Laura Searcher. How are you? She said you were pretty great with that um, Power Excel smokeless grill yesterday Oh, on yeah. QVC. I was on QVC yeah. all day yesterday, 24 hours. <laughs> Actually, a few people have mentioned they saw that show and enjoyed that. Yeah, it's always fun to, uh, to be on QVC because I get to talk to everybody. Like, like here, I get to talk to everybody. Yeah, Jean Sangrace is here, and she also said, saw you on the queue yesterday, loved it. <laughs> yeah, man, I, uh, it, was, it was a long day, but it was fun. Yeah, uh, we have Richard Clarkson from Monrovia, California. He said hey, it's always a great show, and your great equipment with it. Oh, man, thank you. That means a lot. I appreciate it. Yes, uh, let's see. Who else is Cheryl out there? Prince saw you on QVC yesterday. <laughs> hey, you guys, we're watching QVC. I, yeah, I wonder... Um, so listen, the smokeless grill is great, and I'm sure we will do uh, we'll do some some Facebook Live, some YouTube uh, mm. uh, with the smokeless grill. I love that because you can use it inside all year round. So much fun. So Jess, just show them the pork uh, one more I time, um, guys. I hope you will air fry this. If you have a rotisserie, great. Use it on the rotisserie. This is a really flavor packed recipe. It was so much fun to uh, catch up with all those people out there. It was. Uh, yeah, I see we had a, a lot great of audience. friends. We see some new people. YouTube, uh, hopefully uh, you guys are enjoying this recipe. I will talk to you later. See you next Thursday. Bye-bye.